now for the element of air and a chance to breathe, relax and stretch our posture back to alignment. For this, I'd like to introduce a unique posture restoration practice called La Jin. Another secret technique from the East that is often paired with Pida as it also aids in unblocking the meridians. As well as lengthening the tendons back to healthy, functional length so that our bones can set properly and sit in their natural, integrated alignment. La Jin means stretch in Chinese. And there are six main La Jin stretches to cover all the major meridians. For this course, I'm going to be focused mainly on the lower body La Jin poses. But when a meridian is lengthened, after a few minutes, the chi starts to build and travel along it. The longer you hold the position, the more chi you will feel traveling along the meridian, and more specifically, you will notice the blocks where the chi can't flow smoothly, as you will get discomfort in the precise locations of the blocks. Each stretch is held for an extended period of time. The position doesn't really start until the discomfort begins, so if you hold a position for 10 minutes, and you only feel discomfort for five, then five more minutes in the position, to total 15, would give you double the potential benefit of 10 minutes. The discomfort you feel is the chi hitting up against the block. And as you hold the position, it starts to burrow through to clear it. This is where the practice differs from traditional stretching or yoga, where normally you might change position within one or two minutes. So just as the chi starts to flow in a direction, you change the pose and its potential to affect change at a meridian level is therefore lost. As well as that, the tendons need time under tension to make lasting change. So the duration we hold the poses for also helps to affect change in the tendons as well. But Tim, are you sure about passive stretching? Can't passive stretching be dangerous if you overstretch certain areas of the body and leave our body imbalanced? Well, I too have had many doubts about passive stretching in the past, but I feel there is a fundamental difference with the La Jin stretches. And I believe that all of the select group of poses in La Jin to be biomechanically sound. And by that, I mean they work with the parameters of movements and functions that the human body was designed to do. As an example of where passive stretching can be dangerous, if we take something like pigeon pose and yoga, and you had three different people do them, they would all likely have differing amounts of pressure and completely different joints, tendons, and muscles within the body. There's a lot of scope with a pose like that for nuance. Whereas with La Jin, all the poses are straightforward and everyone can set up for them on the same train tracks, just at varying degrees of depth. And then we allow gravity to do the rest. That is to say that these poses cannot be overdone as long as you follow the correct steps to set up. So how can this help? Not only can this help with posture, mobility, functionality, as it works in our meridians, it may also help us with sickness and diseases too. Posture-wise, if we take the main lunge in pose, the recline pose, that alone I believe can help with rib flare, pelvic tilt, internal hip rotation, geek neck, all in one pose. This also covers the lower back pain, hip issues, spine issues, neck issues, as well as the added bonus, potential bonuses like sleeping better. Disease-wise, I won't go into it too much, but you can research more for yourself, either on the internet or via Master Hong Chi Zhao's book, or just try it and find out. Okay, so what equipment do I need to start? Well, the most important stretch I would like you to do is called recline pose. For this, you need a table and a door frame or the corner of a wall. You could use two chairs or a box like this. You may also want an ankle weight if this pose feels too light or as you progress and get better. We also do a calf stretch, which requires a slant board, though this can be relatively easy to make shift yourself at home using a plank of wood, a box, or a big book. Other than that, all you need is a wall and to stay warm while you relax into each position. While you're there, you can focus on your breathing and feeling or encouraging the chi to flow, or you might just want to put on your favorite podcast, listen to an audiobook, or my go-to is to listen to some divine truth on YouTube. A word of warning, when you practice this, you might encounter something we call a healing crisis. Once again, just like Pida, as chi starts to flow where it may not have flown in years, and the toxins start to be pulled from where they've been hidden, 
This can cause a healing crisis where you may feel any disease symptoms you've had buried, heightened for a short while before feeling better than ever before. I personally encountered some dizziness, tiredness and low mood before being catapulted to a greater mood and a deeper sleep than prior to the practice as the blocks were worn away. Another word of warning, some emotions can come up during the practice too. They did for me, especially with the heart opening positions. If this is the case for you, I'd encourage you to humbly feel and express them. And just as a disclaimer, just like with the PIDA, this is not medical treatment, I'm not a healthcare professional, this is self-applied posture therapy. If you choose to try it, you're doing it on your own volition and ultimately, you're responsible for your own health and well-being not me. Let's try some La Gine. Here we have the king of the stretches, reclined lodge in pose. In my opinion, this is the most bang for your buck out of any stretch you could do for your posture and your health. To set up, you're going to need two things, the corner of a wall or a door frame, and you need a flat surface to lie on, like a table, a big box, or you can use two chairs, as long as you have enough room to support from your hips to your head. You want to make sure that this position is half on or half off the corner or the door frame, and make sure you can stay cozy and warm because you're gonna be here for a minute. Now hop on the table and scooch your butt right up to the edge so your leg can sit flush with the wall like this. And if you can, pull down with the big toes and stop your foot pointing away from the center line like this. Then lie back, tuck your chin, and lift your arms over your head. And with the remaining leg, you're just gonna let that hang. Now start to take slow and deep breaths through your nose and into your belly and relax into the position. Now you're gonna to want to stay in this position for at least 10 minutes per leg to begin with. So set a timer with an alarm, put on an audiobook or your favorite podcast and kick back. The benefits from this position only start to take place once discomfort begins. Troubleshooting the position. If it's too painful for your leg to be flush against the wall, just put it to where you can manage for now, without it being too sharp a pain when you first lie back. If your shoulders don't go flat and are lifted, just try to stay here. You've got frozen shoulder. Hold them where you can and potentially use a few light weights or a heavy book to weigh the arms down a bit. You want enough room for the leg to hang without the heel resting on the floor. If it's just the toes, that's okay, as long as the weight is down the front of the thigh. And if it's too easy and you don't feel anything, you might want to add an ankle weight. Anything from three to 10 kilos should do the trick. If you want to work more internal hip rotation and the liver meridian, pull the leg into the center line more like this. If you have IT band issues, which is also your gallbladder meridian, you can rotate the top leg 45 degrees out like this. Also, for maximum upper body benefits, focus on locking out the arms and pointing the fingers. Try to stay as still as possible in order not to disrupt the chi from flowing. And once you've done 10 minutes, gently get out of the position, take a wonky walk and shake it off for a minute. Then to make sure the body stays balanced, do the other side. What does it do? When in this position, we're lengthening the body in three opposing directions, a horizontal simulation of human locomotion taking a big, joyful stride. As we stretch and lengthen the body, this takes the kinks out of the meridian channels so that the energy, or chi, starts to flow much more freely. After a few minutes, this can usually be felt. You will likely feel it as either a precise shot pain or as a dull sensation over a wider area. The location of the discomfort is simply highlighting where any blockages in the meridians are, like water pressure up against a bent hose pipe. And as the chi bumps up against these blocks, it starts to burrow through them. This is what causes the pain to be felt. The intensity of the pain is proportionate to the efficacy of the treatment. Recline large impose works on all the meridians at varying degrees. But the ones it works the most intensely are the heart and small intestine meridian, which runs on the pinky side of both arms. The longest meridian in the body, the bladder meridian, which runs down the back of the top leg. And on the hanging leg, the kidney meridian runs all the way from our chest, down the inner thigh, 
and into the sole of the foot. And the liver and spleen meridians also run down the inner thigh, both to either side of the tip of the big toe, which is why this pose is the key part of this course. Feet or ankle issues could be caused by one or multiple blockages much further upstream, which is stopping chi and therefore blood flow getting to the problematic area. If that is the case, then this stretch helps us both to diagnose and cure it all in one. Word of warning, stimulating these meridians all at once, which may have been blocked or compressed for some time, can stir things up. It can cause your body to shake or tremor, or as the body is a storehouse of our unexpressed emotions, you may feel emotions start to rise up. The opening of the heart meridian may make you want to cry. The kidney meridian could activate some stored fear, or you might possibly feel angry and want to scream from the liver meridian being dredged. I've personally experienced all of these reactions. So my advice, if it happens to you, is to safely try to let it move through you and humbly express whatever it is that arises. Also to note, the reactions may not end there. The effects of things flowing again, clearing out old toxins stored in these locations can cause something called a healing crisis. This usually goes through three phases. One, identifying the blockage, as we just covered. Two, revealing an illness, which could feel like the heightening of an already existing disease that you're either aware of or possibly unaware of. This could test your commitment to the practice. And three, finally, with persistence, the illness will start to subside and greater health than prior to beginning the practice can be experienced. With that said, I'd just like to remind you that you are responsible for yourself. If you choose to try this, it's your decision. Benefits to posture. Not only does recline large help to unblock meridians, which can help our muscles to soften and relax, this pose can also help to lengthen many of the major tendons in our body, which run parallel with the meridians. The time under tension spent in this position is how this practice differs from traditional stretching or yoga, and a key ingredient in making lasting changes in the body. I believe this one stretch alone can help with hip mobility, both front, back and internal, which can help with anterior pelvic tilt and other issues. And because of the tensegrity nature of the human body, the benefits of greater hip mobility bleed over to also help our knees, ankles, lower back and shoulders. What also helps our shoulders is holding our arms overhead like this, with the back flat, which can also help with rib flare. And lying with no pillow on a flat surface for an extended period of time also helps our neck to lengthen out and our head to sit more upright. Altogether, this can counter something they call Jin Su, which means tendon stiffness in Chinese. As many people age, they become more and more hunched as the tendons tighten and shrink. There's a Chinese adage that if you lengthen the tendons in your body by one inch total, then you can increase your lifespan by 10 years. I'm not sure how true it is, but anything to counter Jin Su would at the very least add more quality to life. When tendons are long and flexible, this allows our bones to sit in their natural alignment and for blood and chi to flow freely. So if I had to choose one stretch to do every day for the rest of my life, I think recline larging would be it. Here, we're going to work on a popular natural human resting posture, but with a few tweaks to maximize its benefits. Squat Largin is the perfect counterpose to recline Largin. From opening up in three directions to squeezing up as tight as you can in a ball. Paired together, they cover the most bases of the body in lengthening tendons, unblocking meridians, and aiding posture. To set up, depending on your ability, you may want some sort of wedge for your feet. Trainers with enough heel height might work for you also, or possibly even sole steps if you have a pair. Alternatively, or additionally, you might want to counterweight nearby. I prefer one that isn't anchored down and not too heavy in order to keep the position active from my knees down. And like you have Velcro in between your legs, you want to put your feet and your knees both together and squat down. If your hands are free, hug your legs and drop your head to extend your neck. Now pull forward on your shins and drive your knees as far over your toes as possible. Take slow, deep breaths through your nose, but this time into your lower and upper back. Now you're gonna want to stay in this position for at least five minutes. I currently do 10 minutes, but you can do anything up to 30 minutes plus per day. 
set a timer, put on something to listen to or call a friend, or try to meditate like a monk. Remember, benefits from the posture only start to take place once discomfort begins. So as long as you spend a good amount of time uncomfortable, changes will happen. Troubleshooting the position. If five minutes is too hard, then you may want to use a bigger wedge under your heels or a heavier weight to anchor off, or do multiple sets to accumulate the time. I sometimes do reps within my 10 minutes of one minute with a weight in my hands and one minute without. The bladder meridian is the longest meridian in the body. It starts right between our eyes, goes over the top of the head, down the neck, the spine, the lower back, over the glutes, down the hamstrings, down the calves, and finally round the outside of the foot, finishing in the pinky toes. When I think posterior chain, now I think bladder meridian. And remember, as meridians are lengthened and then held for extended periods of time, this encourages chi and blood flow. In the recline lodge in, a big focus is the stretch on the bladder meridian at the back of the knee. In the squat lodge in, we focus on stretching all the other parts of the bladder meridian, especially around the glutes, all the way up the spine, and the often neglected neck. How this differs from looking down at your phone all day is the way it really lengthens out the back of the neck and the chin stays tucked, activating all the upper back muscles that hold it in its aligned place. And if we focus on pulling the knees forwards over the toes, it really activates the shin part of the stomach meridian. And as you can see, God put a little squiggly lightning bolt right in the middle of the shin, like the barber did to your hairline when you were seven. So working along the shin in this way can really help with the front side of your ankle mobility. As well as that, it's a good massage for your stomach itself. The squat is a widely talked about position to work on in health and movement communities because it is anciently natural and aids with rest, recovery, digestion and defecation. In this large inversion, I found quite a unique take on it that I've found value in practicing, especially when paired with recline lodging. Perhaps you will too. Now we're going to hit all three meridians of the inner thighs, much like in reclined pose, but this time simultaneously and at a different angle. This one is important for improving the chi and therefore blood flow into our feet and ankles. To set up, you just need a floor, a wall, and enough space to spread your wings. Get on your back, scoot your butt right up to the wall and open your legs. Then, just like in recline large in, the most important part that people often forget of lifting the arms overhead like this. Once again, make sure your timer is set and you can either quiet the mind or put something on to listen to and breathing gently through the nose into the belly. You're going to want to do at least 10 minutes minimum in this position. I like 15 to 20 minutes to allow enough time for the chi to flow and work its magic but that really depends on how quickly you want changes to take place and how much discomfort you're willing to feel in the position. What does it do? Wai La Jin really focuses on all three yin meridians of the lower body, the kidney, the liver, and the spleen, which run down the inside of both legs. It's the lengthening of these meridians and the accompanying tendons in order to open up the hips and to encourage chi and blood flow into the lower extremities. Also to note, that these three meridians all end in the upper torso. So when we lift the arms overhead like this, it's kind of like pulling your waistband up really high as it stretches and lengthens these out, as well as the bonus of it working the heart and small intestine meridians situated in the arms too. Additional things to try. If you have any hip issues, you may want to add five to 10 minutes more at the end of your session to do one or both sides of this side Weiler Jin variation, where you put the leg on the problematic side, flush with the ground like this. Another variation to consider is squaring the feet and making them parallel. I feel this slightly adjusts which meridian on the inside of the thighs becomes the focus, as well as opening up the gallbladder and stomach meridians a little more too, on the outside and front of the hips, respectively. A word of warning, just like with all the large Jins, when we work on many meridians intensely and all at once, Weiler Jin can stimulate a healing crisis, as discussed in greater detail 
in the intro and the recline lunge in videos. For me, it stimulated quite a big reaction early on in my practice, where I felt dizzy and fatigued for some time after trying to push 30 minutes in the position, though now I can do it without having the same reaction. Be gentle and move slowly when getting out of wide lunge in. You might want to use your arms to assist your legs to close. You may feel pain, but it should be short-lived and followed by some relief in the area. Overall, it may seem like simply a stretch for side splits, but with the arms overhead and the duration we spend in the position, Wyla Jin is working at a deeper level. And if you try it too, you may understand what I mean, but that's your decision to make. Air Malajin, or Seiza as it's more commonly known, is another natural human resting posture, much like the squat. Though one of the key differences from the squat is that the feet are in plantar flexion as opposed to dorsiflexion, so it works the opposite end range of our ankle's mobility. As we're going to be on our shins, to set up you may want something soft, like a yoga mat or thick carpet to do this on. Kneel down and unhook your toes so your shins are flush with the floor, then sit back on your heels. You want to separate the knees slightly and put the heels on the outside of your butt, with the toes closer together, like this. If this is too intense, you can elevate your feet on a cushion or place a cushion between your heels and your butt, and this should take some pressure off. Depending on how intense this feels, you want to do it for at least 5 minutes, or if you can, anything up to 20 or 30 minutes, unless you already use this a lot in your day to day life. As you can see, I've still got a long way to go in this posture, but my butt used to hover more than an inch above my heels and it was incredibly uncomfortable. Now I can just about do the 5 minutes on flat ground without fidgeting too much. This is a great counter pose to the squat as it lengthens the stomach meridian and the shin that the squat works. It compresses on the bladder meridians running down the calves and when we come out of the posture it gets flooded with chi and blood flow. As well as that, another great effect is that it helps to stretch the tendons and the meridians around the front of the knee. Additionally, I think it can be useful to play with squeezing the calves at the bottom of this position or pulsing up and down to wake up the dormancy of the muscles in its most nurtured position. To do so, either squeeze your calves or try to drive your shins into the floor. It should lift your butt half an inch or so. The Caesar, a classic human position I would be grateful to welcome back into the 21st century Western society. Could be a while before it replaces chairs though. Here, we're going to be working on lengthening the longest and strongest tendon in the human body, the Achilles, as well as opening out and decompressing the bottom of the feet. To set up, you're going to need an uphill slope. You can use a slant board or makeshift one with a firm box, plank or a big book. Then, you simply stand on it. You want it to be steep enough to feel a good stretch down the back of the calf, but not too steep that it hurts right away or that your feet get pulled sideways. You want both feet to be parallel, like they're on train tracks. And try to keep your ankles, hips and shoulders in one straight line to really lengthen out the backs of the legs. And if you want it to be even more challenging, lift the arms overhead. Additionally, you could add some smaller slopes or sole steps to raise the insides of your ankles like this. To make any changes, you're going to want to be here for at least 10 minutes but 20 would be better for more than double the impact. While you're in calf larging, if you want, you can read a book, check your phone, or do some pida. You want it to be slightly uncomfortable from at least five minutes onwards. You may feel this in your calf or the bottom of your feet. If you're really tight or want to mix it up, you can try doing it on one leg. This will almost double the weight, so you want to halve the time for each leg. You can use a stick or a wall for support if you like, but I would recommend just trying to balance for added foot activation and stabilization. You should feel your foot getting a good workout, as well as stretching the Achilles tendon. This is also lengthening out the bottom of the bladder meridian in a slightly different way to the squat large in, due to the angle of the body weight and as the back of the knee is open and lengthened too. Once the time is up, go for a walk. Your feet and ankles should feel slightly different, at least for a short period of time anyway. And if you do this every day, over time, these changes will begin to stick and slowly become more permanent.